We have a lot to talk about today. Let's start off with a little review of number five. Shall we? Ring! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're gonna go ahead and do the best thing ever. Draw an impasta. But while I'm drawing an impasta, I really want you guys to actually think about what impasta means. Yes, it is the name of a rule you're going to have to play when you're doing some uh, sussy games. However, when you're, however, the next thing you're going to have to talk about is what it actually means. It means a fake or a person who just goes ahead and is all like, I'm real when they're actually fake. And that's the role of this guy I already showed you. And of course, he does a friend loads of these guys do a pretty good job at that. And imposter is basically similar to fake. And of course, it's the antonym to genuine. It's like saying, it's like trying to figure out who's the real Loki. And of course, with that, we figure out what imposter means. Our next word is tycoon. Tycoon is basically a noun, and it means you're basically a great guy. You're the richest man in the world. You're an business enterpriser. You're the greatest guy. Basically, you're a very big leader in something like an oil tycoon means a leader of the tycoon industry in a local town. And so that's very similar to the word mogul. Or like Elon Musk, because he's tycoons of all sorts of things like neurotechnology. He's also a tycoon of, not exactly, but he's also a tycoon, a tycoon of space industry. He's also a pretty big tycoon of cars, too. Look at his Teslas. I see a lot of Teslas out there. And so the acronym would be co a common businessman. Sure, they can be rich, too, but they're not as big as these guys. Our third word is extol, which is a verb. It means you're going to praise someone a lot. To praise them a lot. And you're all like, nice, people. Let's go ahead. You're doing good job, Amelia, or something like that. And then the acronym would be criticized. The fourth word is futile, which is an adjective. And it basically means it's really, really ineffective. And why is it really, really ineffective? We have literally no idea. Unless you do have a really big reason to be futile. It's like what Sam was trying to say when he's all like, and I am inevitable. Yeah, like that. And that happens, and literally everything seems to work out in his favor. And then the fifth word, and of course this other word is ineffective and the antonym is effective. The fifth word is desist, which is a verb, and it basically means to stop doing something. To desist something, to ask someone to desist something, means to ask that person to stop doing that something. And of course, with that, loads of things can start happening, and that is just where things seem to start getting very, very, very confusing. It means to cease, and the answer to that would be to continue. Do not desist doing that painting, because it is the most important job of our entire lives. And then the seventh, and then the seventh, and the sixth word is innocuous. Innocuous basically means harmless. Now watch this. This guy right over here might seem harmful, and yes, might seem harmful. But in reality, he's actually a nice guy who hates war. And of course, which brings us to the antonym, which is harmful. Our second word is our first adverb in this series, which is gingerly. It's the second word, and it means to do something carefully. To be careful it means you're like, great, and you're very, very good. That's something like gingerbread. So you try to put it in the oven gingerly so that the gingerbread does not break. And, and just as you, it's cooked. I have no idea what you would do. Put cooked gingerbread in the oven, but it is. And of course, the antonym is carelessly. Our A word is moribund. Note, it sounds like moribund sometimes. I only spelled it moribund once. Moribund is an adjective. It basically means you're really, really close to death. And it's really hard to find a synonym to that, so I just ended up writing the definition, close to death. And of course, it's basically that's about it. Close, close to death. It's like a thief is all like, a moribund child. Now, here's the location to Monte Cristo Island treasure. It's like the Abbe when he's close to death and he tells uh, Dantes about his secret treasure. And of course, the antonym says that he's all that's alive. And the eighth word is, and ninth word is monologue. 
Monologue is basically as it seems. Mono means one, and log means talk. And prologues, epilogues, all that are used in speeches, books, or whatever. So the monologue must be a solo speech or somewhat something like that. And of course, the action to that is dialogue or something. is pretty similar too. Because dialogue basically is just the talk of the town. You're talking with someone else, not a monologue. You can't have a dialogue yourself unless you're thinking to yourself, and that's a soliphony, soliphony, which is something else entirely. Our last word is strident. Strident, strident has nothing to do more to do with the word trident. Now, strident is an adjective and is similar to the word shrill, and the antonym is lower. Like to be a strident cry means you're like, <coughs> like that. And with that, it's pretty shrill, and the antonym is lower. And that's pretty much all I have. Test time, people! Test time! First word, imposter. Now, who is the imposter? Red kill! Red is the imposter! No, I did not. Well, why do you have red blood stains on yourself? This is from the burger stash. It's ketchup. And, there are, and everyone else is yellow. Yellow. I don't know what's going on. Blue. Well, pink size. Pink. I don't know what's going on either. White. Well, blues blaming red for is accusing red of being the imposter. Blue. Blue. That's kind of sus of you, says pink. Blue. Well, how am I sus? You're accusing someone without any evidence. He has red blood. He has red blood stains on himself. That's ketchup, Red says. How times I just say that? Well, I kind of actually believe Red because there is a burger task here that I have seen them doing it. What? How are you? How are you? How are you blaming me? Because the Red, because the red, this task bar filled up when he left immediately. Bro, every imposter does that. Every other crewmate does that too. What makes this different? Well, uh, uh, let's go blue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blue. Wait, I have memory scan. Too late. Beep, 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 beep. Blue was not the imposter. <gasps> red was. Red kills pink, and ev- there are no more me- emergency meeting. Oh, wait, we can report the body. Beep! Red, 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 red. Red. Oh, shoot. Second word is tycoon. Ever played Idle Miner Tycoon Kid? No. It's a pretty fun game. It teaches you how to be a tycoon. Oh. Really? Oh, it's a tycoon simulator. It's not actually realistic. What are you doing? I have an idea. I have a mil- I have a trust and I got a million dollars. I just inherited a million dollars and oh, I know what I'm going to invest it in. Ding! Ten years later. Hey kid, how are you living? Remember that tycoon game you told me about? Yeah. Well, it did help me train to be a tycoonist. Because I did this! Ba 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 ba! I am a tycoon in mining now! Bro. Bro! And the third word is extol. Are you going to extol me or what? No, I'm gonna criticize you. You're very, very, very annoying. You do know that, right? Yeah, I do. The, the 442 tile. And I am inevitable. It's futile for you to attack me because you're just gonna disappear. Snap! What? Iron Man. And I am Iron Man. And no, it is not futile for us to attack you. Therefore, desist. Are you going to desist doing that, officer? Doing what? Buying a billion, a hundred pizza boxes? No, it's for a YouTube video. You don't even have a YouTube channel. Oh yeah, I didn't tell you about it yet. What? Next word is innocuous. Are you sure that dog's innocuous? Yeah, he is. Watch this. Pet, pet, pet. Now you try. Pet the pet. Is bitten. Second word, gingerly. Can gingerly pet the dog, sir? He's not innocuous. You lied. I did not know that, sir, but gingerly, you, sir, you pat it. You literally hit him on the head. No, I did not. <laughs> smack, smack, smack. Oh. Sorry, doggy. See, he likes it. Our next word is Moriman. Are you sure that the moribund sea will not just tell the stuff to his kid before we get there? Nah, I'm pretty sure it's not that stupid. Where's the treasure? I have no idea. Well, do you know it, kid? No, he's dead. And he tried to tell me, but he died before that. Well, search the house, kid. No, 
Why? Because I already searched it. There's nothing there. Who we'll searched it? There is nothing here. Sorry to bother your days, sir. The kid. The Hatter God. God. Ah, uh, it's underneath me. Ah. Oh. My birthday? No. Reverse. Nice treasure. You got it. Sad. Nightboard monologue. Are you going to do a monologue in a prologue? Are you sure about that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Are you sure? Because people are starting to hate monologues. I'm gonna make monologues cool again. Five years later. Ooh, monologues are cool. Monologues are cool because of this movie. Nice. I nailed it. Ten four. Strident. The trident makes a shrill sound when it hits the enemy. Isn't it them who makes a shrill sound when the trident hits them? Close enough. And that's it. See you guys soon. Not out. Peace, 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 peace. Boom!